Hi, I'm Leah Varu, and I'm going to talk about the efforts and current status of standardizing a caller API for the web platform. But first off, why should you possibly listen to me? I've been involved in web standards for about a decade um, as a CSS working group member, and more recently as an elected W3C tag member. I'm a co-editor of CSS Color 4 and CSS Color 5, which are directly related to this. And my day job is researching human-computer interaction at MIT CSAIL, and more specifically, usable programming, which is directly relevant to API design. So what are the platform and user needs to dictate how this API is going to be designed? First off, one of the biggest needs is input and output for existing web APIs. Currently, we're just passing strings around, which is suboptimal for everyone. Uh, and there's a bunch of APIs that require this. There's the Canvas API, obviously the CSS OM, there's WebGPU, even newer proposals like the iDropper API, and of course, um, input, input, input type equals color in HTML and whatever follows it. Um, also, there are the, authors, the, the author needs for their own applications. They often need to parse CSS colors that their users provide as input um, to convert uh, between different color spaces and manipulate different coordinates, um, sometimes with, sometimes without gamut mapping, depending on the use case, uh, or compute color difference and contrast um, and interpolate. So what are the requirements for such an API? One requirement is that it needs to be color space agnostic. It cannot be centered around sRGB or use RGB coordinates internally or anything like that. And similarly, it needs to be compatible with both HDR and SDR. It needs to be extensible so that authors can add more color spaces because we cannot possibly add all of them to be built in. And it should follow, its API should follow a layered design. It should be usable by non-experts. It shouldn't require a ton of knowledge to use it, but it should still be useful to experts if possible. Some earlier efforts centered around reusing CSS color value for this. CSS color value is part of the typed OM, and it's, uh, the API consists of an abstract CSS color value class that inherits from CSS, color, from CSS style value, and multiple subclasses for, for the different color types in CSS. These subclasses may have different API shapes. For example, CSS RGB has R, G, and B properties, wh while CSS color has a channels property with an array of all the coordinates. And similarly, their constructors have different signatures as well. CSS RGB accepts uh, red, green, and blue coordinates as positional arguments. CSS color accepts a color space argument and an array of coordinates. It supports uh, basic color space conversion, and it's generally an early stage spec, no implementations yet. So what are the advantages of using CSS color value across the platform to represent any color value? There are two obvious advantages, that there's just one object across the entire web platform. Authors don't need to have the overhead of converting from one object to another. Everything accepts this one object, and it has good integration with CSS right out of the box. These are the obvious advantages. However, there's a bunch of disadvantages as well. The primary thing is that CSS color value is designed to represent CSS color values. It's designed to represent syntax, not colors, not points in a color space. So this causes a lot of words, which are actually perfectly fine design decisions for what it was designed to do. They, they only become problems when you try to repurpose it to do something else. So, because it's designed to represent syntax, CSS has two ways to represent sRGB colors. There's an, the, the RGB function and uh, hex colors as well, uh, like the, the sRGB specific formats. Um, and that corresponds to the CSS RGB function. And there are, there's also the color function when the color space is sRGB, which is represented by, C, by the CSS color class. So basically, you have two different ways to represent an sRGB color, and 
if you convert any color to an to, to, to an sRGB color, depending on how you write the argument, if if you're converting to RGB, you get a CSS RGB object. If you're converting to sRGB, you get a CSS color object, even though both are sRGB objects. Also, it's all its properties are, are objects, not primitives. So the keywords are not actual strings. They are CSS keyword value. Strings are accepted for input, but the output is objects. And if you need to read the actual primitive value, you have to do dot value on them, which is kind of clumsy. Similarly, the coordinates are not numbers. They are CSS numberish objects. So you, you also have to do dot value to read the red coordinate, the, to read any coordinate. Um, it, it's, it gets quite clunky. And coordinates may not even be actual numbers. Since this is designed to represent actual, to, to represent CSS syntax, CSS syntax can have calc expressions instead of numbers. And this object can also represent this. Like, what are you supposed to do in your JavaScript if you get a calc expression for a coordinate? There's, there's nothing. And these issues cannot really be fixed by API design iteration because they are not problems with the API design. They are great design decisions for representing CSS syntax. If you try to change it so that it's better for representing color, colors, then it becomes worse for representing CSS syntax. It, it can't really do both. So for that reason, we started efforts to design a separate color API as, uh, as a completely new thing. And this started, so Chris, Chris Lilly and I started this work in 2020. Um, it started by this library that we, that we created to experiment uh, with API design ideas and algorithms. And even though it hasn't been officially released yet, it has received a fair bit of community input um, and usage and feedback and even derivative work. So the current state of the Color API, um, you can find it in these URLs here. Uh, there's a draft explainer and a draft spec. And this API has been designed from scratch, even though it has been influenced by our Color.js work. Uh, a native API has different needs than a library. And we also got useful feedback from Tab Atkins, who is the spec editor for CSS color value. And we iterated on the API even more after this feedback. So what's the current API draft? There is a single color class, no subclasses, with, uh, and its constructors uh, basically accept a color space, coordinates, and optional alpha, or a color that could be a string, or a CSS color value, or even another color instance to clone it. Um, Chords is an observable array, which means it can be, it's mutable, it can be tweaked. Um, the color space property is either a string or a color space object. Most likely it will be a color space object. Um, and alpha is just a number. Currently they're all mutable, though there's an open issue on that. Uh, so color spaces are represented by color space objects. And color space objects can be created by authors as well. And there are predefined ones for the predefined color spaces. They can be registered via color space dot register and that, then they, they can be referenced by an ID. But anonymous color spaces can also be referenced by just passing objects around. And that can be useful for encapsulation for web components to use color spaces without polluting the global namespace. And to declare a color space, you need to declare uh, its white point, its coordinates, uh, a function for its gamut, and conversion code to and fro from any existing color space. Or you can load a color space from an ICC profile, which resolves to a color space object. And color spaces cannot become unregistered once they're registered. This is by design. There's a bunch of convenience methods for conversion and manipulation in any color space without having to convert the color itself. For example, it's common to want to change the lightness to make a color lighter without actually changing its color space. Um, and all of these can be done. There's also a conversion method to a different color space. Um, and similarly, any 
So both uh, coordinates in any color spaces can be both read and, and written. Uh, and there is also relative manipulation supported by passing in functions. And there's an aggregate syntax as well for performing multiple manipulations in the same color space. Gamut mapping need, is explicit. All color conventions are lossless by default. This is important for round tripping. So gamut mapping is opt-in. There is an in-gamut function to check if the current color is in gamut, either of its own or other color spaces. And there is a two-gamut function that performs gamut mapping uh, to the gamut of any color space. By default, this works by LCH chroma reduction, although authors can pass any coordinate in that method to use that one instead. This is important to, uh, for it to be truly color space agnostic, like you might define another color space like OKLCH, for example, and you might want to do your gamut mapping based on OKLCH because that is, that's better for that purpose. It's an open problem how to avoid uh, people passing nonsensical coordinates for gamut mapping, like hues, for example. Uh, we had a breakout in the CSS working group uh, on July 21st, and we discussed these options to resolve on future direction. You can read the minutes, they're published. And we resolved to add color API for representing color points that is separate from CSS color value. Um, and that it should, as a minimum, handle all the color spaces currently specified for the web platform. Uh, and we moved the color API repo from a personal repo to YICG for incubation. There's a bunch of open issues. This is a very, very, very early stage work. Um, some of them, uh, some of the most thorny ones are how to declare polar color spaces, like how to declare that a, color, that a coordinate is an angle, also, what really is a color space? Right now, color models and color spaces are mixed. Like HSL is declared as a separate color space that is just using sRGB as its base. It's, it's, it's using the sRGB gamut and it's, converting, it's converted to and from sRGB, but it's still syntactically a separate color space. Is that a good idea? Do we need to separate color models somehow? Um, also, mutable or immutable, right now it's kind of a mix. It's mostly mutable, uh, but there are functions that return new instances instead. Also, how to do HDR tone mapping? Um, and what should be the, integra the integration between this color API and CSS? What happens with registered color spaces? Are they available in CSS as well? Um, or, and similarly, do color spaces de declared in CSS by the, uh, the add color profile rule, do they become registered color space objects once the profile loads? Uh, and how does parsing and serialization of author-defined color spaces work? And these are only a few of the open issues. There's a lot of work to be done. So are you interested? Come and help us design this. Here's the repo. Thank you very much. <laughs>